Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you this morning to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the third Sunday in Easter, and so we are progressing through the resurrection narratives, but we must also recognize that today comes as we have played through a whole arc of reading since the birth of Jesus his ministry, the clarification that he is the light of the world, then coming to Holy Week, and now in the process of making our way through Easter and the resurrection stories on our way to the Holy Spirit's coming on Pentecost and then taking up again the ministry of Jesus. We're listeners. We are watching, reading, Uh, We are making our way. Uh, It's not just Jesus and the disciples, right? But we are, by coming and being present, listening, and our lives are continuing and then come and bump every week into this narrative of God's that is uh, going on. We believe in the risen Lord uh, and that this risen Lord is with us in the journey that happens the other six days and 23 hours of the week, right? That, that God isn't just present here, but God is present out there with us. And so uh, not unlike the disciples on their way to Emmaus having a lot of different feelings about what has happened, I come before you today, I kind of want to just ask, and wish truly I could sit with each of you, but I wonder where do you find yourself in this story in your own life? In your own walk with Jesus, where are you in the Emmaus story? Look, as I look out at you, we are uh, certainly of uh, different ages. We are of different backgrounds. We have made our way to today through broken and painful experiences, well as tender moments and beautiful pieces of our life, transcendent even from time to time. We've made some of us uh, our way to today with a few, few years behind us uh, and, uh, and some of us with decades. We arrive today and we bring all of that into this room before this table of the risen Lord. And I wonder, are we kind of making our way, uh, uh, trying to figure things out? Are we a little bit lost as we continue that journey in our lives? Are we not sure about what has taken place and what its meaning is and what lies before us? Are we uh, uh, maybe over the last few weeks of going and rehearsing the Easter story, maybe we, we may have felt that way, but maybe we're renewed right now. Maybe we come into this moment today with a sense of great renewal that something is happening and I wanna put my finger on it. I want to capture that sense that God's presence, uh, I think for Episcopalians, is so present in Holy Week. I want to hold on literally to that for the rest of the year. Maybe that's, that's uh, where you are. Um, and that that Easter experience has been one of a renewal. Maybe you're having the great debate with God, right? You know, the... The one that says, okay, I I understand this happened and this happened and this happened, but I don't know what it all means, God, and I would like you to write it down on a piece of notepaper for me 
or text me with the revelatory thing so I could be very clear about what I'm supposed to do or whether you exist or like all of that kind of heady, that heady stuff that the disciples are in the Emmaus story wrestling with, right? Like we don't know, he was preaching and teaching and so it takes Jesus kind of helping them to figure out what is going uh, on. The truth is that we all arrive really kind of with a mesh of all of this going on. And if you're human, it could just be like one day at a time. Like you could be riding the roller coaster from day to day, right? Like really feeling like, I got it. I don't have it. Where'd it go? <laughs> I want it again. Right? So uh, uh, it's almost like we need, and I, I want to recognize that uh, some of you have been around long enough that one day I was young, uh, and you remember that. I want to honestly own that the next thing I have to share with you, but it is a complete dad joke, and so groaning is permissible at this moment in the sermon, but it's like we need a JPS instead of a GPS, right? We need like a Jesus positioning system that could help us know where we are on any given day. Some of you don't even know what a GPS is, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But this mesh of context comes into us in the midst of this, and, and the truth is valleys and mountaintops are just not normal. It is not normal to have an experience of Emmaus. And I think the church sometimes does a disservice by not owning that. That sometimes we can live our whole faithful lives and never have an Emmaus moment. And theologians have wrestled with this fact for a very long time. And what they've determined is that we can't go uh, on a religious experience that's purely based on emotion and how we feel. But that the capacity of religion and following Jesus is actually much more complicated. And that some of us will approach the divine with our thinking. Some will find it in doing work. Uh, for instance, an altar guild person will tell you that one of the most Pelian spiritual weeks they have is when they're setting up the altar, right? And sometimes it is emotional. Sometimes there's a feeling to it. But I think we, if you're like me, I, sometimes I think I'm supposed to have this other thing I don't have. And so what I'd like to say and suggest is that the Emmaus story written in the Gospel of Luke is actually a story about life with Jesus. It is, if you remember the very first words, it's written so that you may believe. And that this life is uh, one of difference for all of us. And so I want you to take away two things today with you, okay? Two, and one of it is, one of them is this. I believe, and I want you to trust this first thing. Whether you know it or feel it, God is present. God is present in your life. Bidden or not bidden, Jung said. God is present. God is walking with you every day, every day, in the form of people you do not recognize as Jesus, (laughs) right? But that God, the story tells us, God is with us. And if we practice from time to time a little bit of reading of the Bible and things, things can be revealed. But that, that does, if it doesn't come, God, it's not like God's not present. God is present with you 
all the time, whether you feel it, know it, or don't. That's the first thing, to trust in the risen Lord. The disciples say, some of the women say, some days you got to trust what the women are saying. <laughs> right? Like they don't know, but some of them are saying this. Well, sometimes you got to trust what the others are saying. On the, you know, when, I'll tell you, I know there are people who don't believe the creed all the time. Don't cross your fingers. Trust that the church can hold that for you in your disbelief. Help my unbelief, Augustine. Paul. The second thing is this. It's only in walking out of here for the rest of your life that you're going to find that Jesus. Yes, Jesus is present here. We will come forward. We're going to put... I'm oh, sorry, I forgot the camera. <laughs> Didn't mean to turn my back on you folks online, but... Say, we're going to come forward, we're going to put our hands out, and we will receive the risen Lord in bread and wine. No matter what you think. The church says that's what's happening, and that we need it, whether we recognize it or not. But the life we live with Jesus isn't here, it's out there. And it matters. It matters. And people will see the risen life through you. Because for somebody else, you may be the stranger on their Emmaus walk. They may need you today, tomorrow, or the next day. And it may be a phone call. It might be an email. It might be bumping into them in the store or restaurant. Who knows where it will happen. But for some people, you're the stranger. You will be the presence of the living Christ in their journey, just like they may be in your own. So those are the two things. Trust the church. Trust that some believe when you don't and that the truth we have come to understand after thousands, thousands of years, both testaments proclaim it clearly. God is present. And that it's in the living and walking that we will discover it. So, we will take our first steps in just a few minutes. From here, in the table, where the revelation is once again proclaimed, back out onto our own Emmaus walks. Wherever they take you, and whatever may come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.